92. Be glad you go to a church where the Lord will come by every now and then. Now some churches he's outside knocking trying to get in. That's a lot of them. And I like it when he comes by and you can feel his presence. I'm thankful for it. Psalm 92. It should be there on the screen there for you. And we'll go to a couple of other places. I, You know, I battled with this, and now I know why. You know, I was trying to preach three other sermons. I said, Lord, I, you know, I don't... I, and, uh, and I kept going back to this, couldn't get away from it. And now I know, I know why. Psalm 92, and let's look at verse number one. Are you there? Say amen. It should be on the screen there for you. Now, now try, try, when I read this, try to stay in your seat and not get excited. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Yeah. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Yeah. Upon an instrument of ten strings. Now, people, some people say, well, you're not supposed to have instruments in the church. Well, they had one in this one. Upon an instrument of ten strings. Somebody said, what's a ten string? That's two five string banjos. <laughs> and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. We've seen God's hand move this week. O oh Lord, how great are thy works. Anybody want to say amen right there? Amen. And thy thoughts are very deep. Amen. Now, I want you to move down to verse number 10, and here's where I want to look at in verse number 10. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Fresh oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Let's go to the Lord in word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for allowing us to be here and what we've already felt and uh, how you've already met with us and we're grateful for it. I'm grateful for all the folks, the home folks, the visitors, and those watching online. Thank you for them. And I pray, Lord, that we can get something from your word. Lord, the singing uh, has done what it's supposed to do, and the congregational singing has done what it's supposed to do, and that's usher us into a, an attitude of worship so we can get ready to receive the word. Lord, I pray that you would help us, God, get what we need out of these verses. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want you to notice verse number 10. All of that other stuff was just good reading. But in verse number 10, he said, I will, uh, my, but my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a, a unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Now, in the Bible, there's a lot of typology. Uh, the Holy Spirit can be typed by the wind. You remember in John 3 where he says, the wind bloweth where it listens. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whether it goeth. That's like the Holy Spirit. And so the wind can be a type of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes in the Bible, fire is a picture and a type of the Holy Spirit. Y'all remember the burning bush that spoke to Moses and he said, what is your name? And that bush says, I am that I am. That fire can be a picture and a type of the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. They're both the same person. It's just two ways to say it, but it's the same person. 
and it could be uh, pictured as water. Sometimes, uh, matter of fact, uh, in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void and darkness on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God began to move on the face of the water. So sometimes water can be a picture and a type of the Holy Spirit of God. But here's where I want to just uh, dive in just for a minute. In Psalm 92 and verse 10, he said, I shall be exalted. I will exalt my horn like the horn of a unicorn, and I will be anointed with fresh oil. This oil is a picture and a type of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, let me preface it by saying this before you get into the sermon. Just because a preacher says Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit doesn't mean he handles snakes. Sometimes you have to, to teach Baptist people because sometimes Baptist people are so Baptist that if somebody says Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, they think you turn Pentecostal. But the Holy Spirit is for everybody. It's not just for one group. It's not just for the Pentecostals or the Charismatics or the Church of God. It's for every, It's in the Bible for everybody. You say, preacher, now, now I don't know much about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Now listen, he showed up just a few minutes ago. And he started pouring oil in here. You say, well, I didn't feel nothing. You might want to check up. Because if your car don't have any oil in it, it ain't going to go very far down the road. And let me just say this. You got to have oil in your car. And not only that, some of you are probably running on oil that's got 30,000 miles on the oil change. And that's why Psalm 92 says, I shall be anointed with fresh. Man, every 3,000 miles, you need to get down here and say, Lord, I need all change. I need all change. I need to change this dirty all out and put some fresh in. A lot of us are running off the revivals of the 1950s and the 1960s and the 1970s. And boy, that was a good era. That was a little bit before I was born. But it was a good era to hear about all the revivals that swept through the land and the oil that just swept all over the place and the Holy Spirit of God moved and, and, and God saved a bunch of people. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm tired of hearing about what they did in the 70s. I want to see God do something in 2022. We got to have fresh oil. Fresh oil. Now, that verse right there, are you still on? That verse right there says, uh, but my horn shall be exalted. I got to show you this right here. My horn shall be, I'll exalt. And, uh, and shall exalt the horn of a unicorn. Now, don't let that... Yeah, now, that's not the unicorn you see at Disney World. <laughs> In the Bible, a unicorn is an animal that only has one horn. And did you know what I studied and looked at this thing? Now, I know you think unicorn, you're thinking about something off Disney or cartoons or something. That's not what the Bible's talking about. It's talking about an animal, sometimes an ox, sometimes, uh, sometimes they got two, sometimes they got one. And did you know I figured out there's some stuff in the Bible that's put in there and nothing's in there by accident, but God will show us something. And so what happens is these old shepherds, these old shepherds out in the field, they would see an old ox out there that had died. And everything would disintegrate except that horn. I'm going somewhere. Tommy, try to stay in your seat. And after that carcass had died, they would take and, and, and cut off that horn. And then they would haul out the middle of it. They'd haul out the middle of it and where it would be empty on the inside. And then they would pour fresh oil in that horn. They'd fill up that horn with oil. They'd put a cap on top of that thing. They got a little strap. They put it around the shoulder. And anytime they needed some oil to put on uh, uh, whatever, they'd have it. 
Now you say, what in the world has that got to do with us? I got, listen, before God can fill you with all, you got to be first dead. That carcass had to die, die to sin, die to self. I'm enjoying my own preaching. Die to sin, die to self. And then God says, all right, now I can take you and haul out all that stuff on the inside. <laughs> Get all that stuff on the inside. And then pour in fresh oil. You say, preacher, what does that mean? I'm trying to tell you. When I got saved, uh, that, uh, ye who were dead in trespasses and in sin. Then when I got saved, I said, Jesus Christ, I want you to come in my heart and save me, uh, change me. Uh, he did an operation. He come in there and started. He took his knife. He took his pocket knife. And he went in there and got all the stuff out of the inside. And then he filled me. <laughs> then he put all inside me. I've been filled up ever since, and I ain't got over it yet. I'm telling you. Now, you say, preacher, I, I, sometimes, listen, I just don't feel this full. Hey, I promise you, I don't either. I don't feel like that. Like we're saying, I don't feel like that all the time. I don't. And then you just, you know, people that go around, be careful in people. You get around them, and they're, whoo, hallelujah, whoo, well, you know. Ain't nobody that happy all the time. But I'm telling you, sometime, uh, listen, God, sometimes in that thing right there, half of it is filled with just junk and dirt and grime from working all week around folks that don't know the Lord and sometime when he wants to fill you, he can't fill you all the way because you got other stuff in the way. You say, well, what would we come to church for? Because we can get all that cleaned out and say, God, I'm empty. What's the old song? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. But before he can fill you, you got to be empty of yourself. Man, that's good. That ain't even in the notes. And that horn is a picture and a type. And I want to be filled. He said, but my horn shall exalt like a horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. That fresh oil, that Holy Spirit of God, that's where I get my power from. That's where I get my authority from. That's where I get my strength from. That's where I get my victory from. You say, preacher, what do we need? I'm telling you right now, listen, we don't need to stop with the good news we've had this week. We need to carry on. We need a fresh touch from heaven above. Lord, we need fresh oil pulled out over this country. We need fresh oil pulled out over our county. We need fresh oil poured over the courthouse. We need fresh oil poured over the church house. Fresh oil. You say, preacher, what do you believe? I'm going to tell you what I believe. I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. I believe in it. God the Father thought it. God the Son bought it. God the Holy Spirit wrote it. The devil fought it, and the Bible taught it. Hey, Tommy, you should have done been up on that one. Selected by the Father, saved by the Son, and sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. Some people call him Holy Ghost. Some people call him Holy Spirit. I don't care what you call him, but before you leave this earth and take your last breath, you better call on him. It was because of the Holy Ghost that introduced me to Jesus Christ. It was because of the Holy Spirit that led me to Calvary. It was because of the Holy Ghost that put me under conviction. It was the Holy Ghost that baptized me into the body of Christ. It was the Holy Ghost that showed me I was lost in my sin. It was the Holy Ghost that birthed me into the family of God. All because of of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. We don't have any snakes up here. You'll have to go to East Tennessee and Eastern Kentucky for all of that. 
There ain't none up here. I, I'd be like Wendy Bagwell. He said, I didn't see a door up here. I said, where you want one at? <laughs> He said, I'll be anointed with fresh oil. Yeah. It was like that one lady and the husband and wife, they were been praying, praying to have a kid, praying to have a kid. They'd been praying for a long time to have a kid. And I was preaching revival somewhere. They said, Brother Jeremy, would you pray that we have a kid? I said, yeah. And they, 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 they wanted me to, uh, uh, you know, anoint the oil and all of that and uh, lay hands on them. I said, well, I'd be fine with me. I, you know, I don't care. And I didn't have none. And all I could find in my car was that three. How many of y'all, y'all remember that three-in-one oil? Man, that three and one oil, I just squirted something in there. I don't, that woman got pregnant with triplets. <laughs> she called me back. She said, Boy, I tell you what, you really. I said, Ma'am, just thank the Lord I didn't use WD 40 that I had in my car. <laughs> so <laughs> that didn't happen. All right, okay. Before we go eat, let me give you three ways that oil was used. Three ways. Number one, it was used in the recovery of a sinner. The recovery of a sinner. Over there in Luke chapter number 10, in about verse number 30, see if you remember this story. And Jesus answered said, a certain man went down from, Je- from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed him, leaving half dead. That's what the world will do for you. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Now, likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came, looked on him, and passed on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. (laughs) That sounds like Jesus. Came to where he was, and when he saw him, had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in, pouring in the oil and the wine to get that infection and all that stuff, pouring and set him on his own beast and brought him into the inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, he gave it to the host, and said, Take care of him, whatsoever he spendeth more, when I come again, I will repay thee. But the Lord said in this, oh no, that's, that's my next point. Hallelujah. Whew. I got so excited reading. I'm missing my screen back here. We've got to get it fixed or something. Anyway, the recovery of a sinner. Ladies and gentlemen, when you got saved by God's marvelous grace, let me give you this example. It's found over there in Leviticus chapter 14. I don't have it up there, but let me tell you the story real quick. Leviticus chapter 14, uh, this is what they did when they had a, when they had a person come in that was um, uh, leprosy, had leprosy all over them. And if they had been cleansed, uh, what they would do, they would go to the priest, and the priest would take two birds. And he would kill one of those birds uh, and, uh, and, and dip the blood in, a, in a, like a, a cereal bowl. That's the only thing I can explain. Now, the cereal bowl uh, full of that dead bird's blood. Then he would take the live bird and dip him down in that blood and let him go. And that bird would start flapping and blood would cover the leper, the priest, and the door of the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad what I got covered. And then, oh, stand you see, Leviticus 4, you have to read it when you get home. I'll have to go into overtime to read all of that. <laughs> Leviticus 14. Then he would take the priest, high priest, would take his fingers and put in that blood. He would put it on the top of his right ear, put on his right thumb, and his right big toe. Then he wasn't done. Then he would get him his oil. He'd stick his fingers in that oil and put it on top of that blood that was on the right ear, right thumb, and the right big toe. Now, some of you are going, oh, yeah, this don't mean it. it's fixing to. You're fixing to pick a song book up and throw it at the person sitting next to you. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. Hey, when God saved you, he put the blood. You say, what's that picture? That picture's from head to toe. God will cover you by the blood. And not only that, he comes right back over top of the blood and he seals it with the Holy Spirit of God. I'm talking about, now listen, uh, this is why I like the old songs. 
Y'all remember the song, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me? Let me hide thyself and myself in thee. And then one of the verse says, uh, uh, be of sin the double cure. <laughs> the double cure. Double cure. I mean to be cured and then you get double cured. You say, what in the world does that mean? Well, the, the rest of the song tells you. Be of sin, a double cure. Save from wrath and then make me pure. I'm enjoying my own preaching, I'm telling you, I am. He puts the blood on it and then he seals it. You say, preacher, what's all that mean? That means he cleanses you and he washes away the sin by the blood and the blood takes away the sin and the Holy Spirit keeps it from coming back. Hallelujah. Well, you didn't get nothing out of that. Well, let me give you this. In Matthew 25, over there, Matthew 25, God tells us a story. Jesus tells a story about 10 virgins, and they're going to a, a wedding, and they're going to a wedding. Five of those virgins, they call them wise because they had oil in their lamps. These other five over here, they called foolish because they let their lamp go out. And you have any oil. And when the bridegroom come, Matthew 25, when the bridegroom come, they cry, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. These five over here that had oil in their lamps, they go out to meet him and go to the wedding. These over here that didn't have oil in their lamps, they go out to meet him and they couldn't go to the wedding because they didn't have any oil in their lamps. You say, preacher, do you know who's saved and who ain't? I do. You say, I thought we didn't know. Oh, I do. If you got the oil, you're going. If you don't have any oil, you ain't going. Now, I don't know who all that is, but if you got the oil, you're going. If you don't have it, you ain't going. Now, let me, let me take us back to science class, because this is the best way I can tell you. Let me take you back to science class. Anybody remember the science class? When the teacher pulled out the big magnet. And I remember sitting in that class. I don't remember what grade I was in, but I remember sitting in that class. And uh, the teacher, she was trying to teach, has a visual illustration. And she had up here, she had some straight pins. She had some straight pins over here, and then she had some toothpicks over here. And then she took that magnet. She's going to teach us how all of this was. And she ran across them toothpicks. And she ran across them toothpicks, and it looked like them toothpicks, it looked like them toothpicks, it looked like a lot of Baptist churches I've preached in. They never moved. <laughs> Still, they didn't they didn't move. That magnet run across them toothpicks. Never moved. And then she took that magnet and she ran across them straight pins, and them straight pins just shot up in the air and went to meet the magnet in the middle of the air. Now. I can only explain it this way, like a fella in our school, our little class that we had, his, he was, I'm talking about more country than I am. And he was the country, we called him Cornbread. That was his name. We just, well, it wasn't his name, but we called him Cornbread because he was just country. And then she called on Cornbread. She said, now, Cornbread, you, or she didn't call him Cornbread, but anyway, <laughs> she called him by his name and she said, now, you explain what you just saw. And I'll never forget it. It's what he said. He said, ma'am. I don't know, but whatever's in that magnet got hooked up to whatever was in them straight pins. And whatever was in them straight pins knew what was in that magnet. And whatever's in them straight pins ain't in them toothpicks. Now listen. You say, preacher, why in the world did you take us to science class? Because one of these days, uh, the big magnet's going to come to this earth. Uh, his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, and if you're made of the right stuff uh, and he will identify with you, uh, them straight pins are going to shoot up to go meet him in the air. Uh, and then what's going to get left behind uh, is a bunch of <laughs> toothpicks. And the only way I know to explain it is, is whatever's in me 
And whatever's in you, if you're saved, ain't in most of the world that you see on television. <laughs> and I'm telling you, when that big magnet comes, either you going or you ain't. And it all depends on the all of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, I got to hurry. This is, I, I, I put this in a two-part series. But the second one, over there in 1 Samuel, now I'm going to tell you the story real quick because I'm, I'm, I'm getting hungry myself. <laughs> over in 1 Samuel, God told Samuel, he's the preacher, Samuel, I need you to go down to Jesse's house. Jesse's got a bunch of boys down there, and I, I, need you, I want you to anoint with oil the next king of Israel. Well, Samuel goes down there, knocks on Jesse's door, and Jesse, boy, Jesse's like, man, you mean to tell me one of my boys is the next king of Israel? It sure is. Boy, he pulled all his boys in. He, I'm talking about the one from the oldest all the way down, and I'm talking about, he said, I mean, he was really selling it. He said, Samuel, now this one right here lifts weights. He lifts weights every day. I mean, he trims down, does his protein, all that kind of stuff. This old guy right here, he's been to Yale, and uh, he's smart. He's smart. He wears glasses. He knows what he's talking about. He goes down the line, and I'm talking about really selling his boys. Samuel goes down the line and says, no, it ain't him. It ain't him. And it ain't him. I mean, he had a bunch of boys. Ain't him. And that ain't him. And boy, Samuel's like, it's got to be one of these. I mean, this is a, it's what I got. Samuel said, now, are you sure? You sure you ain't got any more boys? He said, well... I got one more, and he's a red-headed, freckle-faced boy, and I know he ain't it. Where is he? Well, he's out there tending to the sheep. He ain't had no bath today, and I really didn't want him, I mean, the preacher comes to how you don't, uh, that's just where he, I mean, that's where he's at. He's got freckles all his face. He's ruddy, and he's just short, and he just, he, he just don't look. I, he, ain't, he ain't no king. Samuel says, well, let me look. God says, you got one of them. I done looked all these. I done spent half a day looking at their resumes. <laughs> Brought in David. And Samuel says, that's him. <laughs> he got his horn, got the oil, and anointed the next king of Israel. You say, preacher, why? 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, you with me? But the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance. Don't pay attention to the freckles on his face. Or on the height of his stature, no matter how tall or short he is. Because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. <laughs> For man looketh on the outward appearance... Jesse was looking on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the salvation is an inside job. It's not an outside job. It's something on the inside. And once you get saved by God's marvelous grace, this is what God does. It, it's, it's almost like he puts his a stamp of approval. When he anointed day, he said, I'm approving. That boy to be king next. Now, there's a lot I could say about this, but I'm, I'm going I'm to move. I'm glad I was raised up in a church where God had his approval on it. I'm glad I was raised up in a family with a dad and mom. And God had his stamp of approval. Then put the oil of gladness. Yeah. Now. This is what I have to remind, and, and uh, Miss Judy's here, and I've told this story a bunch of times. And, and uh, I, at one time, she was teaching Sunday school, and I don't know how old it was, five, four or five, whatever it was, and uh, I thought I was supposed to be preaching that day. And so I got up in the middle of the table. She's trying to teach, and I'm standing up in the middle of the table. Oh, I was telling them kids how it was, you know. And I'd seen it at home. I knew what to do, you know, and all the verses. Boy, I was telling them kids, getting them right, you know. And Miss Judy, get out of that, get out off that table. And, um, and, and about that time, Daddy never done this. During Sunday school, he just come by, opened my door and stuck his head in, and there I stood on the middle of the table. 
He put his stamp of approval on me that day. <laughs> but it wasn't a good thing. And I think I still have that mark. <laughs> and so I, I said all of that to say this. Sometime we see all these little kids and, and, and we see them. And, and especially I have to remind them over there doing children's church. They say, boy, this right here, boy, this one right here was, I'm telling you, you don't know. You don't know who's going to be the next pastor of this church. He could, he could be over standing in the middle of the table right now, throwing candy up in the air. Now, yeah, they need to act right. I understand all of that. But we get them, we get them half of it's our fault. We get them psyched up on this candy over and then send them over there. And no doubt, Miss Judy said, this boy ain't going to never amount to nothing. But be careful. That fella could be your next pastor. I don't know if I've amounted to anything or not. Now, I said all that to keep everybody's attention to be funny. But just a few minutes ago, we're singing them songs and the Holy Spirit just sort of moving around a little bit. And you, and you just, and, and, and your head starts to leak a little bit. That's God saying, I feel welcome in here. You'll be glad about that. We're a perfect church. No, we ain't a perfect church. I don't know of one. If you ever find one, don't join it. You'll mess it up. <laughs> I don't know of one. But I know when he feels at home. And I'm glad to be a part of that. I'm done. I, got, I had one more, but it's over in Psalm 23. And I could take time to, share, to tell it, but everybody knows it. David's out there tending sheep. He's out there tending them sheep. He started looking at them sheep. He said, you know what? Them sheep would be lost without me. Yeah. They wouldn't know where to go find their food. They wouldn't know where to go over here and find green pastures or the still waters over here. And he got to thinking, you know what? What I am to them little sheep, God is to me. Yeah. And then he took his pen and paper out. He got his iPad out. And he said, the Lord, he is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for with me. The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my I'm done. Sammy's coming here in a minute. When I say Sammy's coming, everybody's like, oh, God. <laughs> Sammy, please come. Please come. <laughs> but we, we sung an extra song, and I, I just, I, I can't cut this sermon. I just can't cut it right quick, right yet. And them sheep sometimes, y'all, when I watch this one, sometimes them sheep get out there, and they butt heads with one another. Sometimes sheep butt heads with one another. And when they do, the top of their head, they'll, they'll bump heads with one another, and they'll get out there roughing housing, and they'll bump heads with one another, and then they'll, they'll cause a little place here, a little bump here to come up. So every night when little David come through, he start counting. 98. Well, you got a bump on your head. Here, come over here. And he'll take out that horn of oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. You don't need to be doing that. Let me, let me make it feel better. <laughs> Sometime he'll count and say, 97, 98, 99. I'm missing one. He'll go out looking for them. He'll tie them up. He'll go out looking for that one. What was that song we sang? Prone to wander, prone to leave. We're just a bunch of sheep. Sometimes we wander off. But I can promise you, the Lord is my shepherd. 
and he'll come looking for you. And if you get tangled up in a briar patch, he's always got his oil with him. And he'll wound, bound up those wounds. I sure am glad I serve a Savior like that. I don't know what you're going through. But I do know the Holy Spirit of God, the oil. I'm not talking about three in one, WD4. I'm talking about the oil of the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of me. Sometime I got to have it. I got to have it. I can't survive without it. Sometimes I bump heads. Bump heads every now and with other sheep. Surprise! <laughs> and then I have to find me an altar and say, Lord, I need some at all. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I need some at all. God will pour that oil and make all things new. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. This morning, people have been, they've been gracious to me to, to hold their attention, hopefully. Lord, I, I, I'm